function for onto function or surjective function. A function f um, in which domain element x is mapped onto codomain element y is called an onto function or a surjective function if and only if every element of y is mapped onto by at least one element of x all right important word would be like every every would be important every element of y all right so there cannot be any for a function to be surjective there cannot be an element of y that is not mapped onto an element that is not mapped onto by an element in x all right so the word every there is important so therefore since um every element of y is mapped onto by at least one element of x um the range and the codomain of a surjective function are the same the range and the codomain of a surjective function are the same now how do we determine if a function is surjective Now, to determine whether a function is onto, which is surjective, or not, we can either use a graphical or an algebraic method. The graphical method. First, we must sketch a graph of the function and then draw a um, line parallel to the x-axis. Now, if this line cuts the graph at least once, then the function is onto. So that is, um, we would draw a sketch of the graph and every horizontal line every line that we can draw parallel to the x-axis must cut the graph at least once if we can draw a horizontal line um, that does not cut the what graph it means therefore that this um, function is not surjective the algebraic method now, for the algebraic method, what we do is we let y be any element in the codomain and x be an element in the domain. We solve the equation y is equal to f of x for x. And so why do we do that? Um, when, now we, when we solve y, solve um, the equation um, y is equal to f of x for x, what we'll get is, an x, is um, what y is in relation to x or what or an expression um, for x in terms of y you know what y is in relation to what to x what x is in relation to y and that will allow us to what by analyzing it we'll be able to determine if um if there's a value of what y for which there is no value of x in which case the function would not be surjective but if by analysis, analyzing it, we realize that for every value of y, there is a value of x, we, know there, we would know, therefore, that the function is surjective. All right, let's move on to some preliminary examples. All right, um, example 12. Which of the following functions are onto? All right, well, the first thing, um, a here is a graph and to determine if a graph is um to determine if a function being represented as a graph is onto we need to draw every horizontal line that we can draw must cut this graph only once must cut this graph at least once um so by that by that reasoning i can say that a is not onto the basic reason is, um, if I draw a value of x below the x-axis, sorry, if I draw a horizontal line below this x-axis, you'll notice that, um, that, that, that this line does not cut the graph, indicating that for every value of y below the x-axis, there is what? No value forward x. So by definition, this cannot be onto. Because for it to be onto for every value of y, there must be a corresponding value, must be at least one corresponding value of x. 
And for the negative values of y, there are no values of x. Therefore, this, this function is not onto b. All right. In b, um, the codomain elements, which are t, u, and v, are all mapped onto by at least one element um, from the what? From the domain. Um, T is mapped onto by A and B. U and V are also mapped onto by C and D, respectively. Therefore, by definition, B is onto because every element of the codomain is mapped onto by at least one element of the domain C. All right, by that reasoning, we could simply, we could, we could also conclude that C is not onto. Essentially, um, D and E in the codomain are not mapped onto by any element in the domain. All right, so therefore, C is not onto. All right, um, so example three. We're to prove that the function f defined by f of x um, is equal to, what is that? 7x minus two, we're to prove that this is onto. All right, um, so to prove that this is onto, we have two approaches, we could take either a um, calculation approach, or we could take a uh, we could look at a graphical approach. Let's look at the calculation approach. We're going to let y be equal to f of x, which is seven x minus two. Then I'm going to solve this equation for x. In other words, I'm going to make x the subject of the formula. Um, negative two comes over and become positive two, so I have y plus 2 is equal to 7x. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 7. So now I have x is equal to y plus 2 divided by 7. All right, so remember, from the definition up top, the, um, the domain elements and the codomain elements, so x would be my domain elements, y would be my co-domain elements. So both x and y are real numbers. Now if I add 2 to a real number and divide it by 7, I will still get another real number. And we can clearly see for every value of y, I will get a value of x. So that is because no matter what um, y is, no matter which real number I put in place for y, I will always get a value for what x if um if y is five x would come out to be one um if y is let's say 12 x would come out to be two regardless of the value of y that i select you know i'm going to get a value for x it could be a decimal or it could be a whole number it could be positive or negative but for every value of what y in what um, every value of y in the set of real numbers, I will get a real number x. Therefore, by definition, therefore, by definition, f of x, f of x is equal to 7x plus 2 is onto. And essentially, because for every value of what, um, for every value of y, there is a value of what, x. All right, using a graphical method, um, I think we're asked what, sketch a graph of the function. All right, so we need to draw a graph of y is equal to 7x plus 2. Um, all you need is a sketch. Um, y is equal to 7x plus 2. Um, f of x is a linear function. The graph for linear function is a straight line. Um, it has a positive gradient 7, and um, the y-intercept is 2. So I'm just going to do a basic sketch. Um, I, will not, I will not include 
the only the only coordinate I'll put in, known coordinate I'll put in is um, the y-intercept. All right, so let us say that this is two, four, just argument sake. So the graph cut the y-axis at two, because two is the y-intercept. Um, the origin here, the x-axis here. This is a positive gradient, so it's going to slope up from left to right. My graph is going to slope up. All right, so let us say that this is a sketch of the graph y is equal to 7x plus 2. All right, now the test says um, every horizontal line I draw must, every horizontal line that can be drawn through this graph must cut the graph at least what once. Um, if it doesn't cut the graph, if it cuts the graph at least once, then it is what? Surjective. And as you can see, we'll just draw one. Notice that this line cuts the graph at least one time there. And I can imagine that every, every horizontal line I can draw because this, this line goes on forever in that direction and it goes on forever in that direction. So every horizontal line I can draw will cut this graph at least once. Therefore, from a graphical approach, f of x is equal to 7x plus 2 is on 2. All right, is the function, um, this function is defined in the set of real numbers. The domain elements and the co-domain elements are real numbers. Um, f of x is equal to x squared plus 4. So I want to find out if this function is on 2. All right, um, onto means that it cuts it at least once. So for every real number, every real number which is in the codomain must be mapped onto at least one element in the um, in the domain. All right, let's you go with the, um, the algebraic um, approach first. We have y is equal to f of x, which is x squared plus 4x. So next we're going to solve, um, we're going to solve this equation for x, a quadratic equation. First step in solving a quadratic equation, one side must be equal to zero. So we have x squared plus 4x minus y is equal to zero. The positive y comes over and become negative. Using the quadratic formula, I'm going to get um, x is equal to minus b, which is 4, plus or minus the square root of b square, which is 4 square. So 4 square. All right, where I have b? Right, let's put the formula. Don't need to. Minus b plus b square minus 4ac all over 2a. So let's put in the values. So this is minus 4, b is 4, plus or minus the square root of um, 4 square, which is 16, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is minus y. And this is all over 2 times a, which is 1. So what I'm going to end up with is um, minus 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 plus 4y all over 2. All right. Um, we have what? Minus 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 is common on the inside. We have what? 4 into 16 is 4. 4 into 4y is y, and this is all over 2. Now, the square root of 4 is 2, so I have minus 4 plus or minus um, 2, the square root of 4 plus y, all over 2. 
So this becomes minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus y. All right. So, um, and this is what x is equal to. So what we just did is that we just solved f of x is equal to y is equal to f of x for x. And um, let us see what happens if um, y is equal to minus 5. y is equal to minus 5 is a real number. And for this function to be surjective, every real number I can replace y with. Um, for every real number I can replace y with, I should get a value for x for it to be surjective. So if there's one real number for which there is no corresponding value of x, it means, therefore, that the function is not surjective. If x is minus, if y is minus 5, what we end up with is that y, x, would be equal to minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 5. Now, 4 minus 5 is minus 1. And since we can't find the square root of a negative number, we can see that for every value of x, for every value of y less than, for every value of y less than what? Minus, um, for every value of y less than minus 4, there are no values of what x. And then therefore, in such a case, f of x f of x is not onto. So that's using a um, that's using a calculation method. Now, if I wanted to use, let's say, a graphical method, first I'd have to sketch a graph of the function. So let's get some data so that we can sketch this graph. Um, maybe I could try and get the x-intercepts. To get the x-intercepts, um, I need to solve the equation x squared plus 4x is equal to 0. Um, x is common. We have x plus 4 is equal to 0. Therefore, x is equal to 0 or x plus 4 is equal to 0. Therefore, x is equal to 0 or x is equal to minus 4. Those would be my, um, those would be my x-intercepts. Um, should I bother find the minimum turning point? Not so sure if I need it, but uh, let's put it on for the time being. Um, the minimum turning point is minus hk, all right, where h is equal to b, over 2c, over um, b over what? 4a? Mm. Over 2a. All right. So this becomes what? Um, b is what? 4 over 2a, which is 2 times 1. So h is equal to 2. Let's get k. k is equal to 4ac minus b square over 4a. So this is 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 0, minus um, b square, which is what? My, this is what? 4 which is 4 squared all over 4 times 1. So k would be equal to minus 16 over 4, which is minus 4. So since minus hk um, is a turning point, it means that my turning point would be minus 2 minus 4. So that's my turning point. All right, so with this information, I can draw my sketch. All right, so I have my y-axis. 
add my x axis minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. These are my x intercepts 0 and minus 4. And my y intercept, if I go down like 2, 4, is minus 2, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus, minus 2, minus 4. That would be my minimum turning point. And let's just get my sketch. All right, so this is my sketch. This is my y-axis, and this is my x-axis. Um, the domain values are all real values of x, and the range values are all real values of what y. And if I draw my horizontal line down here, you'll notice that it does not cut the graph. So um, every value of y below y is equal to minus 4, is a value of y for which there is no value of x. Therefore, again, using a graphical method, um, f of x is equal to x squared plus 4x is not onto. All right, let's talk about bijective. It says a bijective function is a function that is both surjective and injective. Remember, um, injective um, functions are one-to-one -one functions. It is a function in which um, um, elements in y elements in y are mapped onto by at most one element in x. Elements in y which are mapped onto are mapped onto by at most one element in x. And um, for the for a function to be surjective, every element Every element um, in Y is mapped onto by at least one element in X. So a bijective function is a function that is both surjective and injective. The, in, um, the inverse function exists if and only if the function is bijective. Um, example 15, which is our last example. Example 15 says, given that f of x is equal to 3x plus 2, show that f of x is bijective. Well, um, you can use, um, all you have to do is show that the, the function is um, injective and that it is also what's surjective. You could use a graphical, a graphical approach. A graphical approach would be nice and simple. Um, it's a linear graph, so let's not do anything fancy. Um, linear graph, this is y-axis, x-axis, this one must cut the y-axis at where y is equal to 2, and it is a positive linear graph, so it must, it must slope something like this, origin, x-axis, y is equal to 3x plus 2. Now, um, for it to be um, injective, every horizontal line I can draw must cut the graph at least once. For um, must cut every horizontal line um, I can draw must cut the graph at least what? At most once. That is for it to be injective and it must cut it at least once for it to be what's surjective. So one horizontal line, one horizontal line, notice that this horizontal line cuts the graph only once. Um, so therefore, because every horizontal line I can draw will cut this graph only once, it is what, injective. And again, because every horizontal line I draw will cut this graph at least once, it is, surjective. Now, if my function is both surjective and what? Bijective. So if it's both surjective and injective, it is also what? Bijective. Bijective. Therefore, f of x 
is equal to um, 3x plus 2 is bijective. All right.